to the Knitting by the Sea podcast. My name is Lisa. I am Saratoga Knitting on Instagram and on Ravelry, and I welcome you to my home today. Uh, It is the very beginning of April 2020, so I want to just make sure everybody knows when when it is, um, because we're going through such a special time today. But uh, this is a knitting podcast, and I live um, in Marblehead, Massachusetts, which is just about 20 miles north of Boston, and it's a little harbor town, so I have the pleasure of being able to see a little bit of the harbor from our windows here. We are very lucky to live in a very old house. This house was built in 1750 and uh, as a warehouse, and then it was trans, uh, transformed into a residence in 1850. So my family feels very lucky to be um, the caretakers of, of this property at this, at this time. As I said, it is a knitting podcast, so we'll do a few things today. Uh, I have some finished objects. I have quite a few finished objects this time. It's been a little bit of a while. I have some works in progress, and uh, we will probably talk about some upcoming projects, and then we'll have some chatter at the end. So let's get started. Objects. I have quite a few, and I think it's been a little bit of a while since I last Uh, recorded a podcast, so I have a lot of knitting done. So let's get started. The first one I have to show you is the Sagostad Hat hat, um, Beret, and that is by Sophia Camaborn. And this was a a gift, actually a uh, a gift of a pattern and the yarn to both me and my sister-in-law Tracy from Patricia of Knitography. Uh, she had a giveaway over on her, um, on her Instagram account, and we were the lucky winners. So and this was wonderful to finally get in our hands. This is the beautiful Rauma yarn that uh, she gifted to us. So this is a super cute pattern by Sophia Camaborn. And it actually is really interesting because it starts out on this part here, not on the brim. So it starts out on the actual piece of the hat instead. I had a little bit of an issue with this, not the pattern totally my issue. And the issue was that you start out with a provisional cast on, so you make a a crochet chain, then you knit into that chain. And the idea is that when you're done with that and you've knit where you needed to go and and you're ready to to pick up those those live stitches that are attached to the crochet, um, the crochet chain, you should be able to just unzip that chain. I, I must have knit into the wrong piece of the chain. Yeah, and it did not unzip. It did not unzip. It also had to tink each one of those out. But again, I made it through. It's okay. I made it through. So anyway, so you do that first and then you actually turn it over because you have this really pretty little pico edging there. You see that? And then you you move on to the rest of the hat. So these are these lovely row houses in Sweden. They're just beautiful. Goes up to the sky with stars in it and then up to the top. Just this very beautiful pattern. I really enjoyed I really enjoyed working on on this. And then at the end you come back in and pick up the pieces. You pick up the stitches here and knit the brim down. So the brim is uh, actually much fewer stitches than the, the hat and so it actually um, hugs into your into your head um, much better. So super pretty. I've already worn this out a couple of times and I think I will wear this a lot uh, next next winter. So again, Sagostad hat by uh, Sophia Camelborn. Beautiful. The second one that I have, let me just look at my notes here. I have them in a pile, but I just want to make sure I give you the right the right information. Oh, right, they're right over here. So these are a pair of socks that I finished, probably on my last one of my last commutes. So I have, have them both finished. They are the Thousand Day Socks, and they're by Mary Lucas, and they are part of her um, Queen Gloriana Sock Club this year. You might remember last year she had the Mary Queen of Socks Sock Club, and this year it's the Queen Gloriana Sock Club. And this club is includes six patterns, so you get a new sock pattern every two months. Um, so I did this first one. It's really beautiful. It toe up, has a fish lips kiss heel on it, and... It just has this really beautiful, kind of a mock cable. These aren't real cables, a mock cable. And it has a really beautiful, just some textured stitches here on the side. And she has a whole story that goes along with goes along with her pattern, so which is really nice as well. And this is a nice touch in the back. The back of the cap is ribbed, and that actually helps pull the sock into your cap, helps it stay up. So I really, I really enjoyed that. This yarn is very beautiful, and it is actually very deep stash from Sophia. You remember we've been doing some... 
uh, some construction up on her floor. We had to redo the bathroom. So we were moving a lot of things in and out. There was painting being done. So we had to clean out one of her closets and she doesn't really knit anymore. Uh, she does a lot of drawing instead. So I kind of was looking there and I'm like, you know, what are you going to do with this yarn? And she's like, well, you can have it, Mom. It's okay. And I was like, huh. Yeah, so I picked up a, uh, went shopping in her little stash there, picked up a few beautiful skeins of fingering weight yarn. This was one of them. This is from uh, Little Bean uh, Loves Yarn, uh, Kayleen, who actually lives in Marblehead. So this is really beautiful uh, old deep stash from Sophia. She pretty much let me have uh, carte blanche when I went in there. The only one she wanted to keep was a beautiful skein of self-striping from uh, Desert Vista Dye Works. She uh, just wanted to keep that to look at, so she wouldn't let me have that one, but maybe I'll get it from, from her at some point in the future. But these are beautiful socks. I don't, I don't even have a pair of socks on the needles right, right now. So gosh, it's very, very surprising. Surprising for me. Uh, the next pattern that I finished, <laughs> just have a, I have a lot that are finished. This is called the Knotted Roses Hat, and it is by Pink Hair Girl. This is by Sally Cameron. And I've known, you know, Sally online for a long time. I've, I've followed her for a long time. She lived for quite so many, um, many years in uh, South Africa, and she did a, a knitting podcast there with her daughter, Rachel. And she's now moved back to the UK, but she does, um, she uh, writes up knitting patterns. So they're, they're just lovely. And this one is a hat pattern. I'm doing a lot of hats right now. <laughs> so funny. But this one is really pretty. It's called Knotted Roses. And these tra they are traveling stitches that, that go up. And then these are bobbles. Yes, bobbles. I have not done bobbles in quite some time. And they, you know, they weren't, they weren't bad once you get into the rhythm of them. But it's a really pretty hat. <clears throat> you can see that. This patterning. This was just some DK sport weight yarn I pulled out of uh, out of my closet. I must have had it for another another project, but it was perfect for this one. It's just the right the right weight and the right warmth um, on this hat. Uh, I had some issues with this one as well. Again, no fault of the pattern or um, or the designer. Totally my fault. You can see it has really beautiful stitch stitch definition down here at the bottom. These are twist it's a twisted rib and that in, in, in it continues up into the hat. And a twisted rib just basically means that um, the purl stitches are, there's a one by one rib, can be two by two, whatever you want to do, but um, the purl stitches are knit as normal, purled as normal, but the, the knit stitches you knit through the back loop and that twists the stitch a little bit and it just pushes it out so it gives it this lovely uh, really definition. It really pops out. You notice that there's a rib there. Whereas on the back, the back of that, it just kind of looks like a regular rib. It doesn't doesn't really pop out or look as elegant as as the the correct side is. So I took this pattern with me to when I went to Arizona on a comp for a conference. I think it was at the beginning, very beginning of March, and I thought this would be a great pattern: larger needles, larger yarn, and I just thought it would be a really easy pattern for the plane, which it was. So I got this started. I probably did. I probably got really one maybe into the second repeat of, of the, the bobble stitches here. And then I put it down and I must have picked it back up again when I was at the hotel and um, I started knitting it and it was just going along fine. And then I got to a point and I looked at it and, and it was at a point where I'm transitioning. I forget how many rows there are before um, before you switch and so that <clears throat> so that the uh, that the, the pattern kind of moves up. So basically what you're doing is you're slipping, you come to the first part of the row and you're slipping it back so that the, so that you're starting one, you're starting the next group of patterns, one stitch either above, above or be, um, or below the, um, the original starting point of your hat. And that just gives it, makes it, makes it lean to one side or the other, which is fine. However, I was knitting merrily along and I got to the point where I was going to transition <clears throat> to the next uh, the next set of stitches and it should move over. And I started doing that and I realized that the pattern was going in the wrong direction. So I stopped and I looked at it and I realized that what I had done when I had picked this up, I was not paying attention to the side with the twisted stitches and I must have picked it up and started knitting from the inside. So I was basically knitting the wrong way around. So that is why when I started the second 
uh, the second repeat, second or third repeat, my bobbles and stitches were leaning this way instead of this way. So I think I think I might have been on the plane when I on the way back when I realized that. I was like, I'm not gonna be able to fix that here. <laughs> so I just put it away, waited till I got home. And then when I got home I took it out again and I looked at it and I was like, well maybe I can take it back and figure out where I am and just where I started going wrong and then go the right way. And I tried to do that, but it just got to be a little bit difficult with the bobbles and the little lace on the side here. So what I ended up doing is just ripping it all the way back to the original rib here. So I came right down to here and then just started again. <laughs> Once I started, I just made sure every time I picked it up, I was actually knitting on the outside of the, of the project. But I just thought that's just a funny thing to share. It's just knitting, but it, um, you know, I got to knit this a couple of times, but it's a really pretty pattern and I've already worn it out too. Uh, it is, uh, as I said, I've worn the other hat too. It's maybe, you know, the days are definitely getting warmer, but it is, there's still days that are in the 30s, 40s, and we have actually have a lot of wind uh, down here by the harbor. So this is actually a really great, nice weight hat to, to wear out on my, uh, on my walks right now. So, yep. So Knotted Roses hat, and this is by Sally Cameron, Pink Hair Girl Knits. So, uh, let's see, the next one, uh, the next one, it, you, you've seen this one in, in progress. This is the Twagos hat, and this is by Susan Vintage from the Vintage Shetland Project, and here it is. I finally finished this. I'm so, so happy, so pleased with this. It's, it came out exactly the way I anticipated it, it would. It's just beautiful, it's thick, it's gorgeous, the colors are perfect. I'm just gonna. I'm so looking forward to wearing this next uh, next year. If this one is actually too warm for for right now for the spring, but it'll be great for for next winter. Uh, you might also remember that I've done this a couple of times as well because I started out the uh, the brim. I remember seeing this hat and why I really wanted to knit it was I saw this hat back last year sometime on fruity knitting and Andrea had done this pattern and she made note of the fact that the that the, the fabric um, knit up with the size needle makes it a very stiff fabric, which is great to keep the wind out, but you need to make sure that you do the, the size that's right for your head because she ended up doing a large size. And I remember hearing that, didn't even take it into consideration, just went merrily on my way. I'm like, well, I think this is the right one to do. No. So I knit most of the brim the first time through, tried it on, it was way, way too tight, and it was so tight that it would not even have blocked out. I just was not going to be able to do it at all. So I restarted it um, and did it a size larger, and that seems to work. That was perfectly fine. That fit my head. That that was great. It's a really interesting because you knit down, and then you knit up again. So, you know, it's just basically one piece, and then you fold this, this piece in. There's a really, there's a line of purl stitches right along the edge, so you know where to turn it up. But so this really gives this um, gives this a, uh, a a double double fabric here, so it's super warm, and, and that's that's why you have to make sure that it actually fits around your around your head. Uh, so so when I you might I don't know if you can still notice when I tell you, but when I started this the second time, I was going merrily along, and I got down to about here, and I did the, the rest of it, and I was like, huh. And I was looking at the pattern and looking at the hat. And if you can see here on the rest of it, there's these little blocks of color, but they're red. And the little blocks of color on this are blue because I didn't pay attention to the color change. Yeah, and then I was too far along. I'm like, I'm not going to start this a third time. <laughs> I'm just going to go with it. No one is going to come up to me in the street and say, excuse me, the blocks of color are blue down here, ma'am, and your blocks of color are red, and that is just not right. No, no one's going to do that. Um, but I just wanted to point that out again. It's just knitting. Just kind of do your own thing on <laughs> this pattern. No one would ever, ever know. And it doesn't bother me one bit. Um, and I'll show you the inside of this. I always like to look at the insides of these. So here's the inside. And all of the floats on there. They're very good. They're, most of these, I, I think there's the color changes are usually within three or four stitches. They're really no more than five. If there are more than five, I'll, I always, like, I will pick, I will catch one or at, around, um, usually around three stitches just so that the, the, the floats get, don't get too too long or unmanageable. But, yep, they they're out, they come out very nice and, and neat on the inside. And this is the other thing um, here. 
This is a trick I picked up from Kate Davies from a pattern I did of hers long ago. And she basically said that when you're doing Fair Isle and you're using really toothy yarn, so woolly, really, you know, really rustic kind of yarn like this, this was Jameson and Smith, and um, you don't really need to worry about weaving in your ends. You just knot them. Oh, most people like, don't knot anything on your knitting, but this yarn is so fine, you, I would never feel the knots on, in it. And she said, just knot it and cut them or trim them off because they're not going to go anywhere at all. You wouldn't even have to knot them, really. They, and basically what happens is they're just going to, as, as the more I wear it, the more they'll kind of felt together. So they're never going to go anywhere, never going to go anywhere at all. I did this on the sheep head hat um, that's the same pattern, uh, a pattern by Kate Davies as well. And it works fine. I've never had an issue with that at all. So I just trim those babies up, leave them on the inside. I will never feel it on the outside. And you certainly can't even see where they are. So just a little a little trick that I like to use when I do that. The third, fourth <laughs> pattern that I finished is a shawl. And let me show you here. I'm looking. I have one. Oh, there it is. It fell on something else. It fell on the floor. This is called the Good Point Shawl by Jana Huck. Now I have made um, I've made a shawl of hers in the past, and she does really interesting um, shawl. Not so much interesting construction, but very interesting technique and interesting use of color in her shawl. The one I knitted before was called the Moon Glow. I'll try to put a picture of, of it up here. It looks like piano keys. Someone actually reminded me about it, asked me about that pattern a few days ago. I really enjoyed that. Um, I really enjoyed that quite a bit, knitting that, that pattern quite a bit. And uh, my friend and Sophia's, actually Sophia's friend, but my friend as well, Emma from Burlington, gifted me some beautiful yarn that she kind of snagged from her mom who was going to de-stash it. And she brought it down and gave it, to, gave it to me. And I loved it. And I just added um, another a skein of brown alpaca to it. So let me show it, show this to you. It's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. Which end should I show first? I think I'll show this. This is where it starts here. So it starts off with some stripes back and forth. It also has a um, an I-cord binding on the edge of it, on the uh, I-cord edging. So and when you're doing the collar work on any of these, you just carry the collar work up the side and you don't have any ends to weave in. This works really well. I really like this, this technique a lot. So there's stripes, there's some plain stockinette, and then you move into some stripes again, and then you move into this really interesting piece where you have these pops of color. These are not baubles, they're just short rows back and, uh, back and forth, but they're almost like waves, and the brown on this side really, really pops out um, in those. And I love this technique. Now, you do have to kind of pay attention to this um, because you need to count your rows when you're going back and forth and make sure you have the right size with them, but really, just really lovely. I love the, the pop of that, of that color and that technique. So you come into some some stockinette again, some stockinette, because now it's going to, this is the halfway point, and now we're going to transition to using the colors in the opposite way. So we have a stockinette, we have striping, and then we have this edge, this side, where the colored yarn is now the one that's going to pop up and using the short rows in the middle. Some stockinette, some striping, and then back down at the end to some plain stockinette at the end. And I love this. This is this is going to stretch it out. I can't even show it all, but it's just <laughs> it's really beautiful. It's very big. This is uh, DK weight yarn, DK or sport weight yarn. Very very warm because it's alpaca, and this is just like it's just sitting on my ch my chair right now and just just like wrap up in an alpaca cloud if I if I um, if I'm a little bit uh, chilly. So I really really I really really love this. And since it's been such a a while now, I actually finished even another. <laughs> project. This one I have had on my wish list. Not my wish list. It's actually been a pattern that I purchased mm, probably a couple of years ago now. It's by Isabel Kramer. It is called Copenhagen Calling. And I think if I remember correctly, she has a get together with a bunch of friends and she will design a, um, a fairly easy pattern that they can all knit together, either start before the weekend or knit during the weekend. And then they kind of have a memento of it. And that, I think they met in Copenhagen one, uh, one year and this was the, the pattern that she designed. And it is a very large cowl. And I had some beautiful, just some 
I think this is just some white Barocco just kind of hanging around for another project and so I decided to use this in the rest of the color here is hand spun that I received um, from my friend Kathy a, a year ago in winter not this past winter but the year before she came in to Marblehead and visited for a morning and she brought me some beautiful fiber and I spun it up and it's all these beautiful pastel blues and purples and browns and I just love it and I've had it done for a while and I just didn't know what to do with it. So it's kind of been sitting there uh, waiting for waiting for something to happen. And I decided that this was the this was the pattern I was I was going to do. So you can see it's it's like th has three sections uh, to it. It has this really beautiful just a plain rib, and then it moves into a color work portion where you're using both of the colors of yarn. It slip stitches though, so you don't have to worry about um, um, you don't have to worry about carrying two two yarns in the, in, um, on any one row. You're only working one color um, on any one row. You're just slipping some stitches, but it really makes a nice pattern. And then it moves into this beautiful lace, lacy pattern here. And then you just have a little bit of a garter stitch edge at the, um, at the end. It's big. It's very big. I love it. <laughs> so this will wrap around a few times around, um, around my neck. And so this will be really beautiful and really fun for for next uh, for next winter and thank you Kathy for the beautiful fiber and the yarn that it was able to turn into and now into this very beautiful this very beautiful project it really it makes me happy to see it makes me happy when I get to use my hand spun uh, and I need to do that more as we as we all do as 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 spinners um, okay so I think I think that's all I've done completed <laughs> for now so let's move on to my works in progress. progress. I actually don't have uh, very many on the needles right now. I think I've said before I'm trying, I did this last year and I'm trying to do it again this year, to only be working on really three projects at a time. I find that that really works well for me. I see a lot of progress on my projects. I get through them. I'm not overwhelmed by making a decision as to what one to, to pick up um, at any one period of time. So I'm still trying to keep to that and so far so good. Um, the first one I'm going to show you today is the Rio sweater, and this is just beautiful. This has been in my queue for the longest time, and um, it was actually gifted to me, I think, on my birthday by Melinda, the yarnder woman, and I was so happy to, to get it that I ordered yarn right away for it. The yarn I'm using is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes, and Knit Picks is, is kind of a go-to place here in the United States. They have uh, some really good yarn, but at, um, at really reasonable prices. And uh, it's just just really good, you know, workhorse yarn, I call it. I, if I'm going to make a sweater, maybe I'll be using some special yarn uh, to make the yoke of a sweater. But then I'll use the Knit Picks Will of the Andes for, um, for the, 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 the balance of the sweater. It lasts really well. And it's just it's wool, and it, it's just at a right the right price point um, for for that. They also have a really nice line of, of what they call palette, and that's fingering weight yarn in solid colors. So those are great to you to do color work in as as well at a at an affordable price at an affordable price point. But this is a uh, top down sweater, and you begin with this the shoulder. Uh, the, the shoulders. You start at the top and then you knit the shoulders. And I'm going to put this up and see if the light will come on correctly for me. Yep. So you can see, I always forget the name of this cable stitch. It'll come to me, but I'll put it, I'll have to put it up here on the screen again. It's really, it's just really lovely. It's a two row cable. So you knit the first row and then you come back and then you actually do the cable part with this, with the second. And those cable pattern is also in the back. So it's just going to be a little kind of ruched part up in the back. And then the front has it all the way from top down to down to the bottom. And I am just loving it. This is not uh, a complicated pattern to do, a complicated uh, cabling pattern to do. Once you know what it is, like I said, it's only two rows of a cable pattern and you easily see where you are or what you're what you're doing once you once you get going so uh, my only issue is that I do a lot of the sitting on this at night I have to make sure that I'm under the good light or I might I might miss something with this dark the dark green color but I am just loving it I can't wait to get it done I'm pretty sure that the cabling goes all the way down the side of the arm as, as well when I get to those I'm almost I'm probably three quarters of the way done with the top and then I forget, I didn't even look to see whether there's some kind of a ribbing at the bottom here, but I'm almost there. So when I get there, that's what I'll do. But I'm really looking forward to getting this done. 
this is going to be one of those sweaters that I'm just going to pull out and use all the time. My workmates are just, they're going to be sick of this by the, by, uh, by the end of next year. But this will be really great for the fall and for the winter for me. And again, it's the Rio sweater. I'm really, really pleased with, um, with this one. My second work in project pro process is, um, is the beautiful new pattern by Patricia R. Photography. And it is called the Forest Path Hap. And it's just beautiful. It's this beautiful, large shawl. And she knit the, uh, the prototype in this beautiful dark green, almost the same color as the Rio sweater that I'm using, really beautiful dark green uh, color. And um, so she came out with this just this, this week. And so we jumped on it. We all jumped on it. And I have started, started it already. Isn't that pretty? It's, it's not a hard pattern to knit. It does have a garter tab start, which those can be a little bit fiddly sometimes, but these the, it's fingering weight yarn, but it's using a fairly large needle. So actually doing the garter tab isn't so bad this, this time around. And it, you know, it flares out on each side. So once you have your middle, your kind of your middle spine here, you, when you're looking at it, you know, you know what you're doing. She has the pattern out in both written form and in charted form as well. And I am a charts girl all the way. So I was really happy, um, happy with that. And, um, yeah, it works well. I, I think I've said before that I use the Knit Companion app for phone and for my iPad. And so I never print out a pattern anymore. I just upload it to, uh, to Knit Companion and it works great. So, cause you can do, you know, you can do, um, do markers on it. You can do counters. It, it it's a, it's a great, it's a great app. I'll put a link to it down here at the bottom as, as well. Um, but I'm really pleased with this. This is some beautiful, uh, beautiful yarn. I actually spun up, so it's hand spun, and I spun this. This is fiber from Caroline in, in Sweden, uh, from her from her mill. And I'll again, I'll put the link for that at the bottom as well. I'm a patron of hers, and this is just, this is, isn't this just gorgeous? It's just gorgeous. When I saw Patricia's pattern, I'm like, because uh, I've had this, I've spun this up for a while. I have it, I have it balled up, and I'm like, I didn't know what to do with this. It's just so beautiful. And this this uh, this hap is is the perfect the perfect answer to that. So I am really happy. I have plenty of this to do it with, and I'm just happy to be you know be doing this this pattern that comes from Patricia, who lives in Norway on this beautiful little farm, and she's raising sheep. And I'm just you know using um, yarn from Sweden, and it, it just all it's got everything. It's got it ticks all the boxes for for me on this one. So uh, this actually probably will knit up pretty quickly. Uh, it's going quickly already. As I said, it's on larger needles, so it, it will it will grow uh, quite uh, quite quickly. So I'm really looking forward to to doing that. Patricia has set up a uh, a uh, knit along on her um, on her Ravelry page, and so we have a bunch of people in there already. And that's going to be I think that's going to be really fun to, uh, to go through for um, for this crazy period of time that we're that we're in right now. Uh, so I don't have anything, I, I have some decisions to make about what to cast on uh, next, so I have to think about that. I have done some spinning, though. Um, I know I've said before, my spinning wheel just sits in the living room and it taunts me every day. And I've really been, um, I, you know, since we're home a lot right now, I've been, I have had some time to to actually sit down and, and, and spin. I actually realize I don't have a lot of spinning fiber left. So I've kind of worked through all of my stash of, of spinning fiber, so I need to think about that and get some more. Hmm. Um, you know, I have, I realized I went through, I have a braid in, behind me in a basket here, but it has, uh, it has, it's beautiful, but it's, I think it's a merino and silk blend. And I don't like to spin silk in the winter because the silk is just, my hands get very dry. And so the the silk just catches on any little dryness that's that's there on your on your hands and the, the, it's it's really uncomfortable for me and um, so I usually try to to wait and spin anything that has silk in it in the summer so I will put that on my wheel this uh, over the summertime but uh, but right now I'm actually working through this beautiful fiber that I got from Carol at Foster Sheep Farm I probably got this a year ago now from the um, when we went to the knit local. Uh, the Washington County Fiber t Tour, because we always stop at Carol's store at the end, and I picked up this beautiful, uh, she gave me, I forget, I probably have, I probably got 8 ounces, 12 ounces, I forget, I got quite a bit of this, and it's just beautiful. Isn't that lovely? 
it's uh, pin drafted, so it's already pre drafted. It it spins like a like a dream, just like a dream. And here it is here spun up. So this is the first half of the of the bag spun up. I will spin them together. I mean, I will ply them together. So we'll, this will be a beautiful, beautiful yarn when it's done. You'll notice I have the <laughs> I have the long tail with the fluff here on the on the bottom. I have been burned before. I always try to do this now. Um, a couple of years back, some of you may remember back in the deep, deep days, I was spinning this really beautiful, beautiful blue fiber. And I just kept spinning along and I came to the end of the bobbin. I spun right up to the end and just let it run through and it just spun onto the bobbin. Yeah, and then I did the second one. And then when I went to ply them together, I took the first bobbin off and the end had totally disappeared right into the bobbin because I spun it right up to the end. Yeah, I could not find the starting piece and that was just... It was sad. It was very, very sad. I was very sad because I didn't want to cut it. I mean, I could have at some point, but I didn't want to cut it. I just needed a way to find it. I did everything I could think of. I just couldn't find it. Sophia, I remember she was home. She was trying to do it. I couldn't find it. And I had to put out a call, finally, an emergency call on Instagram. And I got some good, um, some really good uh, tips on that. But the one that actually worked was to put a piece of tape on out, at the outside of the tape on my finger and run it up and down the, the bobbin. And by gosh, that worked. It just pulled up all of a sudden one day, one time I was like, oh, there it is. It was the end of it. And then I, you know, I didn't want to lose it. But so, you know, lesson learned. And so now I just leave the end of it just kind of so that that's full. That's not going to get, that's not going to get um, felted into the rest of the puppet. You know, just a little, just a little tip there in your, in your uh, spinning adventures. So I'm really happy to be working on that right now. So I do have, I, I probably, actually I have some beautiful yarn that I probably am going to start a, um, a different, another cowl on right now, but um, we, uh, a bunch of us have gotten together a couple of times for a virtual uh, knit night uh, or knit day, <laughs> knit morning, and um, there's Patricia from Knitography, there's Lori and Corinne from Chicken Wind Studios, my sister-in-law, uh, Tracy, uh, myself, and Andrea, um, Adirondack Knitter and Jill Birdie of Birdie and Poppet. So we've gotten together twice now, which has been really, really fun. Once the first time we did it at night, so our poor European friends and Jill in England and um, Patricia in Norway, it was I think it was midnight before for them before we got off. So we kind of decided to switch to change that up so it wasn't so bad. So now we're doing it on Sunday mornings. So we did that last Sunday and we'll do it again this Sunday. So that's really been um, really been a lot of fun, especially now. But it's just been a lot of a lot of fun to get together with um, with some friends and just we just talk and knit for a couple of hours and it, it's it's just it's just lovely. It's just lovely. And the uh, the quality of the apps that are out there to do that now are so much better than they used to be. I haven't done this very much, but the Zoom, we're using Zoom, and the Zoom app is just really great because you can see everybody on the screen. It doesn't block anybody out. It doesn't It doesn't just highlight the person that's that's talking, and the, the video quality is really great. So we've, I really, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed with it. Um, it's really easy, uh, easy to use. So we are thinking about we got talking about what what we thought we might we might do for a um a Rhinebeck sweater for next year for the last two years we've all knit the same sweater together some of us have been successful at completing their sweaters before Rhinebeck some have not <laughs> but it's all it's all in good fun it's all in good fun I actually probably well I don't know we don't even know if Rhinebeck is going to happen this this year or not but we, uh, I, I am not scheduled to go to Rhinebeck this year because I have a, a conference that falls right on that. It goes from that Wednesday to that Friday, and it's out. It's somewhere in the Midwest. I just would not. It'd just be too, too, too crazy for me to try to go to, um, to go to Rhinebeck, which is okay. You know, Rhinebeck is different every single time. Um, so I'll be back the following year and. It'll be a different a different experience. Um, uh, my sister-in-law Tracy is still going to go. She is um, probably going to go with her daughter um, Kate, who lives in Maryland. So I think Kate's going to come up, and they're going to go to 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 Rhinebeck together. So <clears throat> we'll still be virtually together at, at at Rhinebeck, even though I physically won't be there, won't be able to be there this year. But anyway, so we're kind of like again throwing around ideas of what what sweater would everyone like to to do, and I 
my starting point for this, I've thought about that um, before this last uh, knit night that we had, and I'm, I'm thinking that my, my starting point for a new sweater is this. <laughs> yeah, this is a huge cone. I think it's it's either Jameson Smith or Jameson's. I, I, can't, I don't remember which one, but I got this from the Woolly Thistle last year. She must have been having a sale. And this is a huge cone of fingering weight, luscious gray. So this is my starting point for my palette. <laughs> I want to use this. <laughs> or some of it. I probably make three sweaters out of the amount of yarn this is. But so I have this. And then I have, uh, I, you know, I have lots of yarn left over. So this is the Ralma yarn left over from the Sagostat um, hat. I have yarn left over, Jameson and Smith left over from the Twagos hat. And then I have some other random balls of palette uh, hanging around as, as well. So I'm thinking I would like to do something. I really like yoke sweaters. You can see this is this is the Aboreal, I think, by... Uh, by um, Jennifer Steingas, and I, I like these yoke sweaters. I, I just, it's easy, it's great because you have some time where you have to think about what you're doing, but then the rest is just knitting, so it's just great for um, for TV watching or movie movie watching. And I really, I, I just enjoy the shape of these sweaters. They fit me well. I just grab them, you know, throw a lot of little t-shirt and throw this over, and you're good to go for uh, for work. So I really like these, um, but maybe I want to be a little bit challenged as well. So I have chosen two different um, different patterns. The um, the first one. Let me see if I wrote it. Did I write it? I can see it in my head. Let me see if I wrote it down. I did. Amazing. I wrote it down for myself. And I'll actually I'll put pictures of them up here as well while I talk about them. I don't have my iPad with me right now. But the first one is I'm not probably going to butcher this as well. But it, these are both Kate Davies designs. And the first one is Koniche. Koniche. And it is a colorwork cardigan. It's a yoked cardigan. So the colorwork is only up here in the yoke. Um, it is steaked, I'm pretty sure. And I think it has some colorwork on the on the, um, on the the bottom and on the cuffs of the of it as well. But I'll put a picture of it up here. I, I, I have had this pattern, again, for a long time in my library. I really like it. I like the way it looks. Um, but my only hesitation is that I don't have any cardigans in my closet. I don't have any man, uh, um, factory-made cardigans. I don't have any handmade cardigans. I've never knit a cardigan. And I don't really know why I haven't, but I, I haven't. So my question to myself is whether or not I would actually wear it if I've never really purchased any for my for myself it's not really a look I think of going to. I'm just much more of a pullover sweater kind of woman. But that's not to say that I wouldn't wear it. So there's that one. And then Kate Davies came out with another new sweater this week. And it's called the Koofy, I think. Koofy. And it's really super cute. It's a pullover yoked sweater with color work. So, you know, that just ticks all of my buttons. So I'm not sure, um, and I think all of us agreed we really liked both of those patterns, and so we were going to think about it and maybe decide which one we were going to, you know, as a group wanted to do. Now maybe some of us will do one and some of us will do the other, just to kind of have a theme, uh, a theme sweater kind of a kind of a thing this year. But I mean, I probably literally have enough of this to do both of them, so I might <laughs> I might end up doing both, and maybe I'll challenge myself and do the do the cardigan um, first. I, I guess. I need to look at each of those patterns. I don't own the Koofy yet. I, I probably will, though, because I, I really I think it's really cute. Uh, but I already own the Kony, so I need to look at that um, and just kind of figure out what what colors I might use. So maybe that's going to be the maybe that's going to be the one. And I I'm planning on casting on that sweater after I finish the the Rio because I don't want to. I, I I'm not a two sweater at a time person. I'm a sweater and some other little smaller projects kind of kind of person. So once I finish that Rio, so I have some time. I'm not like right at the end of that, but I have some time to do to do that. So I'm looking forward to that. So what do you think? You think I should do the cardigan and like move out of my comfort zone? Do you think I should do the uh, just the pullover and stay where I stay right in my wheelhouse? Or do you think I should do both? <laughs> let me know what you think, <laughs> and I'll let you know what we all what we all decide to um, on that. Um, 
Yep, so those are my uh, some knitting plans uh, for the future. And now let's move on to some chatter. So what has been happening? Uh, what hasn't been happening in this crazy, crazy time that we're in um, right now? It's the beginning of April 2020, so we are in the midst of the coronavirus um, lockdown, stay-at-home option right now. <clears throat> Sophia and I have both been home for, I think this is our second week home, and we're going to be here for the foreseeable future, at least through the first week of May, it looks like right now. Um, my particular job, we actually have been doing work at home for one day a week for probably about a year and a half now. So we have everything set up where we have laptops, we have VPN set up, we have all of our all of our work ready to go uh, on, on the laptop. So for us, the transition hasn't been that difficult. I know for other uh, other offices at the institution have have had no experience with doing this, and all of our classes went online as well. So it's just been really, really, uh, really crazy. I've actually found that it's it, it's kind of exhausting. The one day a week that we had been doing at home was actually it was a a perk. So it really was actually very nice because you could plan out a particular project that you were going to work on for that one day and then just work on that. And you wouldn't really have to worry about too much about meetings or phone calls. You know, you'd always be scheduled for work at home that day. So you, you wouldn't have any other meetings uh, scheduled. Now it just seems like there's a meeting every 10 minutes where, you know, that something that could have been could have been taken care of and you know, a five minute walk down the hallway to ask somebody a question now requires a, an actual meeting. So you have to log into the meeting and there's the regular chit chat and then you have the meeting about stuff. And so it's just, it's very intense. And I uh, manage a couple of people as well. So that's obviously more difficult from a distance. I had a new employee start on this past, this past Monday. <laughs> so this poor woman, she, the first, her first day was virtual and it's been virtual ever uh, ever since. So th that'll be interesting when we finally do get back um, get back into the uh, physical office uh, to kind of get to know her in real life, uh, so to speak. Uh, Sophia is also home. She actually has a lot of work. You know, she works for a travel agency, of course, but it's a really high end travel agency. So the people that have purchased these trips, they're not uh, looking for refunds. They're just basically looking to have them rescheduled out further in time so and that's actually what she does she does all the quality control for any changes that are made so right now she actually has quite a bit to do that may change over the next couple of weeks but I still think that um, that she, even if she is laid off she's going to be one of the first people that comes back because uh, her experience is so broad throughout the uh, throughout the company um, and she'll be fine just be trying to figure out things to do that's really the that's really the issue um, we you know we're home. We're we are going out to to go to the we can go to the grocery store and to the CVS, which is the drugstore. So those are really the two places that um, that we go. I do try to get out and take a walk every day. It, you know whether <clears throat> whether permitting. Um, I I feel like it really just helps kind of blow everything out of my uh, my head and reset. Um, and there's just not that many people out. The people that are out are actually like walking way around. <laughs> Way around each other, so I think in the in general, most people in Marblehead are taking the social distancing um, edict pretty uh, pretty seriously. You know, here and every now and again, you see a couple of teenagers that probably shouldn't be out together, but they are kind of in a small pack. Um, but you know, it is what it is. We're going to do. We're doing our doing our very best. Um, my parents are just fine. They don't go out that much anyway and there's a lot of family my uh, in-laws my my brother and sister-in-law live right next door to them so they're doing all their grocery shopping for them so they're I think they're in pretty good shape uh, too I've talked to them a couple of times and they're they're just fine they've just had to cancel some doctor's appointments um, but other than that they're they're watching their TV reading their books and doing their crossword puzzles and they're and they're just they're just fine Mark's parents are actually down in Florida they go to Florida every year for a month, sometimes two months. This year, they actually had reservations for two months. They went back to Key West this year, which they really, really like. And um, so Mark usually goes down anyway for a two-week period. Sometimes I get to go, sometimes not. It's a it's a hard 
time of the year for me to, to travel because we're in the process of doing new awards for the uh, incoming class. But Mark usually takes two weeks to go down there. And so he was scheduled to go down last Wednesday. And we we tried to see if we could actually push push it up. He had a doctor's appointment that he that got taken care of early, virtually, uh, or by phone. So um, he was able to go a little bit. And we're like, you know, there's no reason to wait until Wednesday. We didn't know if the airspace was going to be closed down or what was really going to going to happen. So we called JetBlue and got it changed to Sunday. And in fact, that was a really good thing that we did because as of last Sunday night at 6.30, Key West was closed to non-residents. So they basically took everybody who was in the hotels and short-term rentals and, and told them, if you don't live here permanently, you need to leave by 6.30 Sunday night. So luckily, Mark's flight got in at 4.30 on Sunday, and his parents picked him up and whisked him away. They're not really in that situation. They are, they're renting, but they're renting. It's a private rental, um, and they're staying in the Key West Golf Club, I think it is, on Stock Island. So that they're not, they're not somebody in, in the you know, radar of being a being the visitor and they're actually, they're there for long term too. So they're there until uh, the end of April. So Mark went down. What we decided that he was going to do is he's just going to stay there for the whole six weeks. <laughs> Not sure if they're all going to survive that, but, but we decided that was probably the, the best, the best thing to, to do um, for them. So he, um, so he would be there, you know, in case one of them got sick. So he, somebody, you know, there'd be an adult in the room, so to speak, if something, uh, something happened to either one of them. And it's actually a very good thing that he did go down because the first night that he got in and there, were, his mother was like, Oh, I didn't want to tell you before you came, but we're having someone over to dinner. He, he kind of went ballistic and he let that happen. But the next day he like, they had this whole sit down and he laid down the law <laughs> with them. No more socializing. If they obviously go to the go to the grocery store, he's the one that goes into the grocery store and gets the uh, gets the stuff. He'll take his mother anywhere. He'll drive her all around, but he he won't let her go into any any place. And th- as of just recently, everything is closed in Key West anyway. I think the entire Keys are closed off. I don't think you can actually drive from Miami um, onto the Keys. Um, unless you have uh, proof of residency. And for if you're not in the United States, um, Florida is a very long polen- peninsula. And at the end of Florida, you at the end of Florida, you go over, a, there's a big bridge and you go over and then there's a series of uh, several islands at the very end of Florida. And they extend very, very far out into the ocean. Key West is the farthest island out. So that's the southernmost point in the United States. And there are all the other keys. There's Isla Rada, there's, there's uh, Key Largo, which is a great movie if you've never seen uh, never seen that. Lauren Bacall, Humphrey Bogart. That is a really good movie. But um, there's just a there's just a series of several islands, and they're all connected by this one road. So we, there's a bridge between each between each island. Now they're all shut down, so you can't go by boat, and you can't go by um, you cannot drive onto the keys if you don't if you are, don't have proof of permanent residency there. So he just made it in under the under the um, under the wire. And so his big thing is, uh, is actually getting to the grocery store first thing in the morning. And he discovered this past week that, <laughs> this is funny, he discovered this past week that, um, that the, their local Publix, they now have an early morning um, time for seniors to, to go in and, and shop. And their definition of a senior is 65 and older. Well, he's just 60. One. He just just sixty one, so he's not sixty five yet. But he, his hair is pretty much all gray. So, so he's like, you know what? I'm gonna get in line. <laughs> they weren't looking for proof of age or anything. He's like, nope. The lady was like, oh, good morning. Come on in. Glad you could make it this early. <laughs> he got in. He is always on the hunt for paper goods. So he's always looking for paper towels, and he's always looking for hand sanitizer. <laughs> so that's his. That's his big his big push while he's uh, while he's uh, on on Key, West, on Key West, but you know they're having a good time. He, I sent him some fresh. He left his ear his uh, earplugs. I'm not earplugs. He left his um, earphones on the plane. I think on the way down. So I had to send him some uh, uh, another set of um, earphones. But I set him up so he has a laptop with him so he can watch Netflix. He can watch Amazon Prime. He can listen to uh, Pandora on his phone so he can kind of get away from his parents if, if need be. And he's doing a lot of walking. He's much more 
of a warm weather person. I mean, I think his skin gets very, very dry. Mine gets dry, but his gets really, really dry. So he, you know, he just thrives in the, in the, uh, the heat and humidity of, uh, of Florida. So, you know, they're, it's been a week, so they're, they're, they're making it through. They're, they're getting their routine. They're getting their routine down. So I think he'll be all right, but he, he will not be home until the first week of May. I mean, they're, they're there until the 30th of April, and then they'll start their drive up. Uh, they probably, you know, I want to say they'll, I want to say they'll probably do three days driving up, and he'll probably do most of the driving. That's going to be the most dangerous time for them, is making their way back up, um, back up the east, the east coast. And then once, if it's still in, in, in effect, once they reach Massachusetts, they have to quarantine for 14 days. So we've already talked about that. And he's like, I'm, I'm like, you guys can all stay. He goes, no, I'm not staying. I'm not going to come home and stay with them again in their house. <laughs> so we set it up. He can have the bedroom and, um, and I can sleep upstairs with, uh, with Sophia. And there's a separate bathroom upstairs and everything. So we'll, we'll be, we'll be all right. If in fact he does have to, uh, he does have to do that. But yeah, it's just been just been a very, very crazy, 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 crazy time. Scary, crazy, but we're all trying to, you know, stay home and wash our hands a lot. Um, yeah, we don't, I, I don't know anyone here who is sick. Actually, one of our um, office mates, she works remotely. She lives in Colorado, and she actually came down sick this, this weekend um, with a fever and a cough and body aches, and her husband has been exposed. Someone in his office had came down with it. So, um, she, she was, she tried to get tested, but she was unable to get tested because she wasn't a part of one of the um, risk, high risk groups. She's, you know, she's young. She's in her, probably in her thirties and she has a, a young, um, a three-year-old. So she is now in quarantine there. And she just it was saying she just really was not feeling very well at all. So I'm anticipating she will make it through and, re- and recover, but you know, it really gets scary when you actually know people, um, that this has happened, that this has happened to. So, um, yep. So we're just going to try to make it through, um, watching lots of Netflix and Amazon prime. I've actually gone back and started watching Miss Marple series again. Um, they're just, they're just so calming (laughs) in a crazy time. We watch, um, what do we watch? Oh, we watched, I think I mentioned, we watched The Farming Life, which is really cute, which is really, really cute. It's about farmers in, um, in Scotland. It's just so, it's so interesting and the landscape is beautiful and you really get a sense of just how much work it is to be, to be a, um, to be a farmer in, in, in Scotland, um, to be a farmer anywhere, but this is really, really brings it home. But there's a lot of cute little sheep and just animals and cows and it's really, I'm really, I'm really enjoying, um, I'm really enjoying watching, um, watching that. We have almost finished the Picard series, the new Star Trek series. I have to watch the, the final one, the season ending, the season finale. And I, I probably should wait until Mark comes home, but I don't know if I will. I might just watch it and not tell him. So shh, don't let him know. I haven't watched it yet, but I, I anticipate I probably will at some point in time. Um, so that's, that's been good. And you know, there's like tons of time to do knitting now. <laughs> I'm just getting, I feel like I'm just getting so much, um, so much done, which is really, which is really great. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to read more that that's the hardest thing for me. You know, when I was a kid, I would devour, I devoured books and I've gotten out of the habit of it. I still read a lot, but it, it's not quite the same it's, it's hard because I'm like, I always think, well, I'm reading, but I really could be knitting right now. And I really want to do that. I'm not that big on audiobooks. I do, I do listen to them. Sometimes I tend to, um, I find my brain just wandering though, when it's not visual. And then I'll be like, oh man, I missed that entire chapter. I got to go back and find where, where I was. Cause I don't remember what was, what was happening. I'm much better listening to uh, audio podcasts. I listen to a lot of news, uh, news podcasts and um, like old time radio podcasts, fun, fun things like fun things like that. But I am actually doing some physical reading. I actually got some Agatha Christie books out of the library again. You know, those just those really comfy, cozy mysteries are are just nice in a in in a time like uh, in a time like time like this. Sophia is doing quite a bit of drawing. She keeps getting more commissions uh, doing her doing her pictures. So that's really great. That's kind of keeping 
you know, kind of keeping her going um, as as well. Um, yeah, so we're just kind of going along. You know, I certainly would encourage you, if you have never done a virtual knit night, to start one. If there's some people that you know, put something out on Instagram, say, hey, I'm, I'd like to host a, a knit night. Anybody want to come and, you know, come and talk with me? It really is a lot of fun. And in fact, I'm probably, I'm talking to people more now because I, I'm not seeing them in person than I was before. Um, you know, my friends in Saratoga and Patricia and, you know, just, I talk with them on Instagram, but n- not a one-on-one, um, a virtual, you know, by, by video. And that's really, really fun. And it, it just brings it home that we're all in this together. I mean, that's really the, that's really for me, the amazing thing. I have to keep thinking about the fact that, that every single person in the world is either sh- should be doing what we're doing or is doing what we're doing, which is social distancing. We're staying at home it's it's just incredible that the entire world is uh, is is involved in this there's no there's nowhere to escape to the only place you could escape is go up to the international space station there really is there's nowhere on earth that really that you could go to escape to escape from um from this um i mean it does feel surreal it feels like we're in a movie but now it's almost become normal it's really hard to sometimes like watch a show on tv or watch an ad and we're like wait a minute they're not social distancing or ooh if somebody shakes another person's hand you're like ooh <laughs> and that's just you know that's really been just in the last month that we we've, we've come to think of that as something that we don't that we don't want to that we don't want to do so it's really interesting it's horrendous that we're we're in fact going uh, going through this but um, we will come out on the other side it'll it, the world will look different. The world will feel different. I think at the other at the other side of this, but at least we have our craft and we can keep going uh, with that. And I, I plan to you know take advantage of, of uh, this time of, of working at home and to get lots of lots of crafting, lots of crafting and reading and reading done. So I think that's it for now. So just remember, it's just knitting. Take care. Stay home and wash your hands. Bye.